Hello everyone, welcome to Attorney Screening, where today we're going to be doing another Hooptober review. And this time we're doing a review of The Giant Spider Invasion, 1975 film directed by Bill Rabane, about a invasion of giant spiders. <laughs> the film sort of centers around um, a meteor falls to earth, opens a dimension for giant spiders to come through, because why not? And um, <laughs> it's kind of like a micro budget, obscure thing that was popular in the 70s and then immediately fell out of all cultural relevance and then seemed to get a bit of a sort of cult B-movie following slash sort of aura because it got run on TV a lot and it's just, you know, quite ridiculous. I don't actually know any of the actors in, or actresses in this film, but I think they're sort of just sort of vaguely popular actors from the 50s right. and 60s okay. sort of doing this cheap gig. I believe this film was only made for $300,000 and it made a ridiculous amount of money for mm. what it is. So, Adam, what did you think of the giant spider invasion? Would you be surprised to know that I didn't like this film very much <laughs> at all? Apparently this film has been kind of, in more recent years, it's kind of got a cult following based off of its notoriety as being a bad film. Yeah. Apparently uh, Mystery Science Theatre did a, yeah. a video on it. For good reason. This is an appalling piece of garbage. Yeah. <laughs> but there are kind of various quirks and goofy details that kind of lend a strange charm I, I would to call it a charming piece of garbage. Yes. Because it's basically in, an entire film generated around one prop. Right. And, this and just an excuse to get that one prop out. Yes, so obviously there is a giant spider prop and apparently the way they created this quite remarkable and to my eyes hideous prop <laughs> uh, was by covering a VW Beetle in fur attaching legs to it and then getting teenagers to sit inside it and operate all the legs and stuff like that. And um, yeah, you can really tell. I remember the first shot you see of the- It looks quite ominous. They, they kind of do a kind of slightly angled sort of- mm, um, like up a hill or something. Failed shot where you get to see bits of it and you're like, oh wow, you get to see like the real, the size of the danger. And like up until that point, you've only like seen tarantulas and smaller mm. spiders. So it was quite surprising. But then, no sooner do, do I think, oh wow, they've actually quite tried to shoot around the fact they've got a cheap prop. That's interesting. Bang, you just get like a big yeah. full on fucking face shot of it and yeah. it's awful. The story of it, there's kind of multiple sort of through lines and B plots. That's kind of where a lot of the weird, kind of more bizarre choices seem to crop up. Because from your title, it's obvious, giant spider yeah. invasion. We need <clears throat> some big spiders to kill some people mm -hmm. in entertaining ways. But there's these really bizarre character interactions going on in the background. It's called filler. The film is basically just desperately trying to fill out time. Oh yeah, 100%. so you have this like weird plot with a guy who thinks he's found diamonds. Yes, um, in the meteor crater. Yeah, and like his wife who like hates him until she thinks that she's rich, and then you have this like weird romancy plot between two scientists as they try and yeah. figure out why the giant spiders have arrived and like a policeman a thing. A completely incompetent cop yeah. that just sort of sits there with a half open shirt. And like, the film is basically just like dragging these pointless plot lines out yeah. as long as possible. It just goes nowhere. No, then, yeah. true. I mean, I just, I do think the, the focus on these characters that live in the barn where the spider, the meteor, at first lands and mm. so that they find the geode with diamonds in it a tarantula crawls out of it and escapes into their kitchen mm -hmm. which leads to her, a hilariously oh, yeah. terrible scene where the spider crawls inside a blender <laughs> like, and then they just, so start, contrived, they just yeah. yeah they just turn it on they start drinking blended spider juice <laughs> they're, oh god what the fuck but yeah, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> Fucking Mondays. But yeah, all the character machinations are really strange. You've got like, yeah, the guy that owns the barn is having an affair. The wife is like an alcoholic or something. Mm -hmm. Like at the beginning, you've got like a character, like a young man shows up to take their yeah. daughter or daughter-in-law. Yeah, and the, she's something. like weirdly flirtatious. Yeah, yeah like, she, like she turns up in scenes with like her kit off and stuff for no good reason. Yeah, it's like, it's very much just sort of feels, has that sort of exploitation movie vibe. Yeah, for sure. I completely understand why you've got filler in it, but it's just such a weird kind of tangential feeling thing taking you away from what really matters. This mm. guy is trying to do like a get rich quick scheme. And at one point he finds all his cows have been murdered, we presume by a giant spider. Yeah. And his immediate thought is not, 
I wonder what killed all these fucking cows. He goes, I'm going to carve the meat up and sell it on and, <laughs> and I won't tell them it's bad meat and it's this whole thing for the next like 10 minutes yeah. about selling bad meat. It's frustrating because I can see the sort of fun idea of this film. It's just not really been executed in the way... To make a film like this fun, I think it needs, for a start, you need to have more giant spider stuff. Oh, but, And I get that this film was on a micro budget and the giant spider stuff is hard to do. Yeah. But like, it... You still need more of it. Like that's not really an excuse at a certain point. Like you're making a, a feature-length film called the Giant Spider Invasion, so you need to have more giant spider yeah. stuff. And the giant spider stuff, it's a cool-looking prop in a way. Yeah, it's kind of like, it, it's silly, but yeah, you know, it's yeah, like oh, I that's that's fun. Like you yeah, could do yeah, some fun. fun stuff with that uh, if you're going for like that sort of goofy B movie way. But like compare this to something like Leprechaun. Okay. That's a film that takes ha, has loads of like shitty elements to it, right? But actually, kind of tries to do stuff with it, and actually, yeah. kind of su- succeeds in yeah, some yeah. ways. Whereas this is like barely trying, and then doesn't really succeed. Like at least in Leprechaun, I can like kind of remember what the characters are like in yeah. Leprechaun Four, right? I can be like, oh yeah, you have this guy, this guy, this guy, and I'm like, and, and and I laughed multiple times during that film yes. because it was funny. And it was so ridiculous, yeah. yeah. Whereas in this, like, it was amusing at points, but it mostly was just filler, and then the spider shows up, and then it gets blown up. And often it really failed to hold my attention in mm. any meaningful way. Like, so much of the I was plot... glued to the screen for Leprechaun 4. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just waiting for the next bizarre, chaotic thing to <laughs> yeah, happen. Yeah. Whereas this mostly evaporated from my brain yeah. almost as soon as I was wa- uh, I'd finished watching it. In fact, while I was watching it, I was forgetting who the fuck anyone was in it. Mm. I guess something that's weird to me is that you have... Sort of two main plot lines of people in the barn who, spoiler, then get killed, most mm-hmm. of them at least, and the scientists trying to work out the problem and mm-hmm. get to the bottom of it. That science solving stuff is the only sort of stuff really directly propelling the story forward yeah, yeah. in a meaningful way. And yet it is treated it's like, more of a B it's plot. It's way yeah. more of a B plot. It's almost C plot. You kind of they really do kind of like shove those characters out of you. And they're the most boring characters. They are. They do nothing with them. And there's the only memorable interaction I have between them is this awful introduction between the two of them where he's like, Oh, I'm here to meet the doctor, mm-hmm. blah blah blah. Oh god, yeah. And he's he's like sexistly negging her. Yeah, essentially. Just, yeah. yeah. I have an appointment with your father. Oh, no, no. Uh, he passed away in 1952. Oh, I'm so sorry. Then the appointment must be with your husband. Not married. Uh, then it's probably with your brother. No, my brother's an interior decorator in Oshkosh. Being a woman scientist, that's crazy <laughs> shit. That's the real Even in the 70s, that's the I real think that science dated, fiction. Surely. Right there. Yeah, you would have thought, right? Yeah. You would have thought. So it, it seems like a really kind of old fogey reference, mm. like to appeal to a kind of older audience. Mm. And maybe, maybe it was because, yeah, this does kind of have. 50s B movie written all over it. It has a kind of weirdly retro 50s feel to it. Yeah, and I mean, at least at the time, it seemed to reap success for it, which mm. is bizarre to me because I can't imagine anyone sitting down and watching this film. I mean, look, in yeah. the 70s, I think B movie horror films were kind of a novel idea. Okay. That making a horror film for super cheap. Basically, I mean, as far as it goes, I have very little to say about this film because the sad part is it's actually quite unremarkable. Yeah. Despite having such a wacky idea and like moments here and there where you're like, oh, that could be really fun. Mm. Outside of that, it's just so nothingy. Yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. really understand the B movie cult status because it's kind of everything bad about a cult film with very little of the good stuff a cult film could I have. imagine that is probably its driving appeal is that it's just so bad and it's so bizarre in a lot of its creative mm. choices. And it also did have some level of acclaim because I feel like a film Sorry, not a claim, but success yeah. in its time. And so I can imagine without that, it would have probably been buried probably, a lot longer yeah. and, and with far less fanfare about it nowadays. But yeah, with the likes of Mystery Science Theatre kind of going through and you know roasting. P- roasting it and picking it apart, you can completely... It is kind of a film ripe for that. Perhaps that is basically the only reason it has a legacy in this day and age. I think you're completely correct. Uh, what would you rate <laughs> the giant spider invasion? You're a big fat two out of ten. Yeah, I'm there with you. I think two out of ten is fair, if a little generous. Yeah, quite. Uh, yeah, thinking about it is. It is. Uh, you know what? It, you know what? It, it's not a painful watch. Like a lot no. of one out of tens, it's painful. This film is very short, and it has like funny moments here yeah, it's and there. Good, yeah, there's a. Good it's key. got a very sort of ironic tone to it as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's probably the best thing you can say for this film. 
yeah. is that it has a level of self-awareness and the occasional funny moment. But yeah, for the most part, not really a recommendation. No. If you do want to watch it, it is on YouTube in full, mm. in terrible quality. Not that that was what we watched. Why would we do that? Yeah, we would not do that. <laughs> We're professionals. Yeah. We wouldn't do that. But yeah, um, that's been our review of the Giant Spider Invasion. If you liked our review, press like. If you're a giant spider, press dislike. Um, if you like these horror film reviews, please subscribe to the channel. We've got more coming out. I know we're a bit behind, but we're going to keep doing them through November and we're going to get them all done. Uh, the list is in the description if you want to see what we're going to be reviewing next. And that is it for us. Oh yeah. We'll see you on the flip side. Peace. Peace.